Well, cool, man. I, I want to begin our conversation with the pandemic. Four years ago, we were trying to figure out how to get out of it. Yeah. And I'm wondering how you got through that time period and how it ultimately changed the way that you do things now. Oh, man, for me, that was actually a beautiful time. So at that time, I actually owned a gym. And I'd actually been trying to get out of the whole gym industry for a while. I got into it and realized, like, okay, this isn't all it was cracked up to be. And then when COVID came, for me, it was actually a perfect opportunity um, because, number one, gym equipment was selling for, like, a ridiculous amount. Yeah. Um, so I had owned my gym for eight years. I ended up selling all my equipment for more than what I even bought it for. Um, and then I transitioned to online, and which was the best decision ever, not only for, for me just to be able to spend more time with my family, but it's allowed me to help way more people on a much bigger scale from all over the world. So let's get to the heart and soul right now of what you do in 2024. I'm going to put you in front of a bunch of third graders at career day. And one of the kids says, hey, what do you do for a living? How do yeah. you answer them? Perfect. So I work with men over the age of 30. I take them from fat to fit. And I believe in doing it quick. So we do it in 90 days. So. Wow. wow. So what did you want to be in the third grade? What was your dream? Uh, I always wanted to be an athlete. You know, I always wanted to be an athlete. Well, it was the NBA until I figured out I wasn't growing anymore. Then it switched to NFL. Okay. And uh, yeah, so. So let's get to how we got to this point right now. Obviously, changing people's lives is is the is the focal point. Take me back to where you were born and raised, and what were the seeds that were planted into you to be in sports and to have that fitness mindset, the healthy mindset? Sure. I think the whole, as far as sports goes, I definitely lean towards sports. So just to go back a little bit. So I was adopted. Um, I was born a drug and alcohol addicted baby. So I was thrown straight into foster care from the get go. So I always felt, I didn't think this then, but looking back at my childhood, kind of like less than, never really fit in, like, you know, my parents gave me up. So I, I always felt like I had to prove myself. And sports was that area where I excelled in. And I realized like, wow, if, I, if I'm good at this, you know, I can get attention, people will like me. And so I just got really, really good at sports and um, ended up getting a full ride scholarship and doing a whole sports thing. I think in terms of fitness wise, where that came from, that definitely came from watching my dad. So my dad growing up was my hero, but you know, he struggled his whole life with weight. Um, and I used to see him go off on diet after diet. And, you know, it got to the point where he ended up, you know, he kind of went through the stage, I call them the stages of diabetes. So he's pre-diabetic, then he becomes a diabetic, then he, you know, they get him on metformin and then it goes to insulin. It's like this progression, which they never help you do anything about. It's just this endless cycle. So anyways, I, it got to the point where I just seen him give up. You know, he did like his last diet and, you know, to see a grown man, especially someone you look up to just completely give up on life as a child, it wrecks you. And then I ended up losing my dad. Uh, I was 20 years old when I lost my dad, again, due to uh, weight issues. I lost my mom at 30, again, due to weight issues. I lost my, I didn't lose my sister, but she lost her fingers, toes. She got her leg amputated. Uh, so everyone in my family dealt with it. And I, I said, you know what, uh, once I figured it out for myself and really understood it because it can be confusing. Yeah. It was like, I felt like obligated. Not I felt obligated, but I, I wanted to give back. You know, I, my dad was highly diabetic. So I remember growing up and, and seeing that. And, and my big thing, the big push button for me was there's, there's definitely a point in your life where you can't look back and say, I want to reverse this. You yeah. can't stop it. You, I mean, you can always get better, but I think there's a point in your life where you just realize there has to be something better. There has to be a different path because it does it. Like you said, it's progressively, it just keeps going and going and going. And the way our system works is we put this band aid on a big gusher. We don't proactively say, this is what needs to be done to help you not have any of these symptoms anymore. Because as you very well know, being as healthy as you are, once you take care of one thing, it's just the domino effect that just starts helping and making everything else healthy in your body. Yeah, you you really hit it right on the head. And you said a lot there. And I love, look, I need, we need doctors. And I love, I'm grateful that we have doctors. But there's also, 
there's a time and a place and there's things they're good at and there's things they're just they're not so good at because they weren't educated in that area. But unfortunately, when it comes to doctors, you know, people put them on this pedestal. So whatever your doctor kind of says kind of goes. And unfortunately, when it comes to nutrition, when it comes to just being healthy, doctors don't know that. They know how to write prescriptions and they know how to do surgeries, which again, I'm grateful for doctors. But doctors aren't needed for everything. Like you said, you're just putting a Band-Aid on a much bigger issue. And what happens, it gets progressively worse. You know, there's a big misunderstanding around even diabetes in general. Most people, well, there's so many people that are diabetic and they have no idea what that even means. They don't even, they don't know what it means. They just think that's something that they're always going to have and they're going to have to take medication, which if they were to make simple lifestyle changes, could all go away could all go away. But again, it's it's that lack of knowledge. And then, you know, I always ask clients, especially that come to me, because I never tell someone to get off medications or to not take medications. I always let their doctor do that. But I always ask them, what is your doctor's progressive plan to get you off of this medication? And I've never once ran into someone who could answer that. The closest they'll get is, my doctor told me I need to lose weight. Okay, well, what was the plan? Well, there was no plan. I think most people probably know they need to lose weight. The problem is they don't know how to do it. So, you know, that's kind of where I come in and, you know, start putting a piece of the puzzle back together and doing all that fun stuff. Yeah, yeah. for sure. So who's been a hero for you? Who's been an inspiration for you in your life? Um, You know, I've had a lot of mentors. I've definitely had a lot of mentors. So probably... Growing up, it was a lot of my coaches. I'm very grateful for the coaches I had. And if any coaches, if you're out here and you coach kids, I know you don't get the recognition. You just don't as a coach, but just know you're changing a lot of lives. And then I had a few teachers that kind of went out of their way to, to pour into me, not necessarily in the subjects and that, but there's always that teacher that just goes out of their way to pour into you. So I've had them and then I would say uh, getting into business, I probably had a lot of mentors, some maybe probably people don't even know about. Probably the most known one I'd probably say is Jim Rohn. Um, some people know Jim Rohn if they're in the personal development space. Uh, my current mentor right now is Myron Golden. Uh, he's been a huge influence in my life. So I've had, uh, there's always been people in my life that has definitely uh, planted the seeds. I just don't think it's been your typical, it wasn't like an athlete or it wasn't a, you know, something like that, you know, local heroes, really. Yeah, for sure. So if you can meet anybody alive on the planet right now that you find fascinating or interesting, who would you love to meet and talk to? Oh, that's a great question. <laughs> if I could meet anybody alive, who would I? This is going to sound really, really weird. But and it's not necessarily a person because I don't know this person. But I would really like to sit down with someone who had like the complete opposite views of me. I'm talking about a hardcore, like racist, doesn't like black people who just thought completely different than me, but but was OK having a conversation. And I would just love to have a conversation with them, a civil conversation to just understand what they're thinking and how their mind works and why they think that way. So it's probably that's probably a weird way to answer that. but. That's interesting. Yeah. No, no, no. And I think that's what we're missing in this world that we live in right now is that we got this whole like, so basically you need someone that would be at a Trump rally, but wouldn't be affiliated with that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. but we've gotten to a point where political discourse can't be done without things getting out of hand. And it's yeah. okay for us to talk about the differences that we have and have some level yeah. of constructive intellectual like conversation about it. It's important. It's yeah. so it's so important to have dialogue with people who um, don't agree with everything you say. Yeah. You know, I get very like if you have everybody around and it, unfortunately, this is how a lot of us set our lives up with. We put yes men and yes women around us that people who view life exactly how we view life. And that's a very scary place to be because nobody will nobody's going to call you on your 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 BS. No one's going to call you out. And, and you could be wrong. I mean, we all view the world from our own lens. We have bias. Everybody has biases. So it's important you have people that are, are checking you and challenging you um, on your belief systems because we can be off. Yeah. You know? 
Absolutely. It's definitely missing nowadays. It's and I, and I, that I miss that. You know, I really, really miss that because we have some, we have incredible technology is incredible. Even like this podcast, you know, we can talk to people all over the world. Something like a Facebook or an Instagram. And unfortunately, instead of what you would think would bring us closer together, it's being like pitted against us to tear us further apart. Which is wild when you think about it. Wild. Right. I think what's happening now is a template for what we don't want anymore. I think we're going to find a way out of it. And I think we're going to find a, a, because I even think about with Obama and McCain, there was civility, there was respect. There was Mm -hmm. this level of we're different, but we can get into it instead of what we're witnessing right now, which is the apex of political theater. And it's not constructive (laughs) political theater. It's it's so, you know what? It baffles me. Oh, dude. In both sides, like both sides baffle me because they're just, there's two, two, like, just both sides. Yeah. And um, like you said, it's just, it's almost like a, you would, if we were 10 years ago, it would be like an SNL skit. Oh, 100%. <laughs> it, it's not even real. It's like, I, I still, sometimes I'm like, did that happen? Is that <laughs> happening right now? It doesn't make any sense. Yeah, it is very, it's a very wild time. And sadly, a lot of people are buying into it, which I know blows me away even more. I'm like, I know. Just take one step back. I don't care who you vote for, who you like, just, just all I ask, use your brain. Yep. Just use your brain and don't be just spoon fed what someone is trying to tell you because it sounds like, I'm like, man, you guys sound like seventh graders up there arguing. This is, this is really wild. Yeah. It's terrible. It really is. So, so let me ask you this. Um, what is the motivation for you every day to do the work that you do to, to, to keep yourself fit and to keep yourself healthy, to help your clients? What is that ultimate gumption for you every day to do this? Yeah, that's a loaded question, but I would probably say number one, first and foremost, I believe we're put on, I believe we're all put on this earth to give back to others. I just believe that's how God created us. So that is like my number one driving force um, to give back. Secondly, it would be my family. They're the ones that inspire me to just keep going, just to provide for them. Those are probably the two main triggers. And then again, I always go back to my dad. Again, I remember just that feeling of just watching him just go into this tailspin with his health. And, you know, I look at my kids and, you know, I promised myself I would never, I would do everything in my power to be healthy for my kids. But I know there's other men out there right now who they're in that situation where, you know, they have kids, whatever age they are, whether they're younger or older, and they're in a situation where, you know, they got, they got part of life figured out, you know, maybe they got the job part figured out, or they're running a business and and that's going good, or, you know, they got the marriage and that's going good. And, but this health issue, they just keep getting stuck and hung up on it, you know? So for that man out there that wants to change, and he doesn't quite know how. It's not that he's not capable. Um, he just he just needs a little nudge. You know, he needs he needs someone to to like pour into him and let him know, like, no, you got this. Yeah. Stop being a pansy. Like, let's go. And like, we we need that. I think as men, we need that. We've we've we kind of curled back into this honestly a wussy lane. In, in a lot of areas and we don't need to be, I, 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 yeah. No, I get it. I totally get it. There's, there's so many things that we get taught in education, but it's like money, relationships, taking care of yourself, like the essential things that are going to actually prolong our happiness and our healthiness on this planet. It's just simply not a part of any curricula. Yep. And yep, you're, you're exactly right. You hit it right on the head. And typically as men, we kind of like, we have egos and we're like, well, I'll just kind of figure it out myself. So if you're not involved with the right people, you go on this life course of like, I'll figure it out. So you're over here trying to figure out finance, figuring out relationship, figuring out your physical body. And all of these things are very com. They can be very complex. It can take you years to figure out your finance. It can take you years to figure out a marriage. So I've just learned probably one of the things that the most beneficial things I learned and I wish I would have learned this er- earlier is the power of coaches and mentors. Yep. I wish I would have, that is like the ultimate cheat code. It's just so much easier for me to go to someone who's the expert, pay them a little bit of money 
in exchange for the years and years and years that they've put in. Yeah. Like that is the ultimate cheat code. And I, I, before I was totally against that. I was like, nah, I'm not spending any money on that. I can go here and get it for free, right? Like, nah. I, I, hear that, I hear that all the time from coaches. That's like the number one thing. If they could get the genie in the bottle, they'd be like, I wish I would have done this earlier on. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Cause it, it's, it's the, it's the ultimate cheat code. And I think as we age and get older, you know, when we're in our youth, we, we have certain things that go for us. You know, we have all the energy to run around and do it all day. We have the physical body when we're in our youth, but we're just dumb. We don't, we don't have the wisdom. Yep. So as we get older, we start gathering all this wisdom, which is important. We have it because we can make up for not being as fast and not being as physically fit with the wisdom. So we start saying, okay, well, instead of just running around like a chicken with my head cut off, how can I do this smarter or easier or more efficiently? So I think that's one of the benefits as we age is that that wisdom that comes with that. And that, again, the coaching, the mentoring, that, to me, that was a no-brainer. So of everything that you've done and accomplished and evolved into in your life, what are you the proudest of? My kids. Yeah. Yeah, my kids. My kids are. And again, I can't, I don't even want to take credit for that. I mean, I, you know, but it's just my kids, man. My kids are just, they're amazing. They're incredible. It's just, just every time I look at them, I'm like, wow, that's like a piece of me. Yeah. Um, so it's like, I don't know. If, like people that don't have kids, I just wish, I hope they can experience that one day, especially as a man, you know, it's, that's your seed. That's someone who's going to continue your legacy. There's so much in that. Um, yeah, I'm just a big family guy. I wasn't always. I yeah. definitely wasn't always. But now I'm a big family guy. And I hope, I really hope that a lot of more men can experience that. Because I feel like these days, there's so much to tell you, like, you know, don't have kids, don't get married, do all this. And, and I subscribed to that for a very long time. But I just don't anymore. I just... I don't. Yeah. No. So as as a sports fan, as an athlete, if you could go into a time machine and go back to one game, watch one sporting event with your own eyes, where would you go? Oh, man, I like the deep questions. <laughs> yes. <So>. Good. <laughs> you know, I probably would go back to. I can't remember. I forget the guy's name who ran the first four minute mile. Roger, Roger Bannister. Roger yeah. Bannister. Uh -huh. I would probably go back to see that. Yeah. Just because yeah. I remember hearing stories and reading on that, how people said like, yeah, if you run that fast, you'd die. And your body would fall apart. And there was all these like myths yep. around it. And I just would love to see the look on people's face and just, I don't know, because it's. I just love people who defeat the odds. I, I don't know. It's, again, it's probably a weird answer, but yeah, that's where I would go. Well, I remember when Ben Johnson broke the record for the 100, and I've mm -hmm. seen that in the Olympic realm, and they're just totally awestruck. They spend their whole lives, every minute, working yeah. for it. And you don't understand that when you're not a top-notch yeah. athlete, you know? Yeah. But there's a lot that goes into it. You sacrifice, you give up, you do all these things, and you want that one moment, and to feel that, man... I mean, that's, that's a, that's a great answer. So at the end of the day, everyone out there has a perception of you, family, friends, clients, colleagues, but you run the show. What's your perception of you? Who do you think you are? Uh, I think first and foremost, I would be, I would want to be known and thought of as a man of God. Uh, secondly, a loving husband, a powerful father, um, a leader. And anything outside of that, I'll take it. But if I can, if I can hit those categories, especially the man of God, good father, good husband, I think that's a job well done on my end. I'll take that. So let me ask you this: I see all the books back there. What was the first book that you read that gave you oh. that thirst for for literature? Oh yeah, that's man. You asked some great questions. <laughs> uh, that's easy. Well, it's the it, Rich Dad Poor Dad. Rich Dad Poor Dad was the first book that I, so I went through all, and I'm not proud of this. I'm just going to say this because there might be people that listen to this that it might resonate with. 
So I went through all of high school, all of middle school, all of high school, all of college. I never read a book, not one single book, none, zero. It wasn't until after co college that I started reading Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And when I read that book, my life completely changed. Like it wow. completely changed my life. And then it, that was paired up with, I heard a quote by Jim Rome. He said, for things to change, you have to change. Yeah. For things to get better, you have to get better. And up until that point, I was the kind of person, I used to make so many excuses and blame everybody for my, my life was jacked up and I was just the worst. But then when I heard that quote, I was like, wow, it's in my control. And from that day forward, I never looked back. I became a avid learner, reader. I stopped watching sports. I stopped all of that stuff and just devoted. That's all I do is read books and yeah. study. And I'm just, I just love learning. I love learning. That's the real marrow of life, man. Hey, if anyone out there wants to hire you, reach out, learn more about what you're doing. Yeah. Any of the good business, where do they go? I think the best the best way to reach me would probably be on one of the social media platforms, either Instagram or Facebook. They can catch me at uh, Tywin Kellendike. Uh, so you say, well, I shouldn't say just like it sounds because it sounds crazy. So let me just spell it out. It's T-Y-W-I-N and then K-A-L-A-N-D. -A so I'd love to just chat, have a conversation with you. Right on. Tywin, this has been wonderful. My, my son, he's with me. He's out of school. He's been very intrigued by our interview. <laughs> How you doing, man? How old are you? 